new videos every day. Hello, my name is Athena Jezik. I'm a licensed massage therapist in the state of Texas, and I'm also a cranial sacral therapist. Today we're going to uh, explain to you a little bit about what cranial sacral therapy is and offer to you a little demonstration. Cranial sacral therapy works with cranium, which is the, the head with the skull bones, all the different skull bones, and the sacrum which is at the other end, the base of the spine and the, the sacrum. The two work together through a tube that goes between the two of them, and we influence that structure. So how this works is the different colors that you see here are different bones of the head. Um, there's some inside the mouth. This particular skull is falling apart, so he's slippery on the top. Now, where these bones change colors, those are called sutures, and the sutures do not fuse together. They stay mobile throughout your life, contrary to what's been taught in a number of anatomy classes. And these sutures expand as the fluid comes up through the membrane, and they contract as the fluid disappears out of the membrane. That's called the cerebral spinal fluid. So the work is done by placing hands on different positions of these bones, and it's a five gram pressure, which is the weight of, the nickel, weight of a nickel, onto the different uh, skull bones, and holding them in space, in, in the place, and as the cerebral spinal fluid fills up, you can feel an expansion take place. If there's been trauma to the body, the bones are going to move in a in a kilt in a tilted manner. They're not going to move straight on each other. They're going to be out of alignment. So by holding a five gram pressure as it expands, the bones at the suture points are able to find their way back to the proper alignment or the position that they're supposed to be in. So they float on top of this membrane and they find their way back to the proper position. That's basically how cranial sacral therapy is working at the physical level. So you may ask, well, why would we want to do this particular therapy? Well, the therapy was originally designed to deal with uh, spinal column and head trauma, any kind of injury to the spinal column or the head. What had been discovered after they've worked on that with people is that it also took care of a lot of other issues. It took care of pain in the back, it took care of hip pain, it took care of emotional problems, um, ADHD, it helped with headaches, it helped with restrictions of the neck and shoulders. So it began to turn out to be a very valuable uh, therapy. So that's why we want to do it, because it relaxes the body down and allows for self-correction to occur along the core of the body, which is along the, the spinal column. So here, what we're doing first here is we're uh, doing what's called a cranial base release. We're at the base of the, of the cranium at the occiput, right near where the spinal column is, and we're releasing the structures, the soft tissue between the occiput and uh, C1, the atlas, um, right in that space between there. So by doing that, we place our fingers in that spacing there and feel for it to be right on the edge of the, of the skull bone. And lift the head up, balance it on top of the fingers like a pedestal, and just wait for the tissues to soften. And as they begin to soften, they, the head tilts backwards and the soft tissue is released. There's a nice feeling of relaxation as that begins to occur. Next, we're starting to lift, uh, we're working on the frontal bone. The frontal bone is this blue bone here. And the hand position is across the top of the, uh, the forehead, hooking into the, the edges of the brow. With that, the hands are, are five grams of pressure are placed on the skull bones there. 
and there's a lifting action where we feel like we're lifting the bone upward and forward. We just follow that bone up and it begins to release along the suture lines as it's lifting. It begins to release and rotate slightly and lift and rotate slightly and lift. It's very small movements, but it's very, very significant. And that's what we're doing here. We're lifting the frontal bone. As this begins to lift, people begin to fall deeper into a state of relaxation. That's a deep state of relaxation. Their thoughts begin to move like a movie camera. It just moves like a movie. They, they're encouraged not to pull thoughts into their mind or push them out, but just let them roll past so the relaxation can go deeper. Oftentimes there's sensation in the other parts of the body that they're focusing on. And then different thoughts might come through the head. But overall, the general is, is people begin to relax and they begin to fall into a deeper state of, of relaxation and consciousness. The next bone is the parietal bone, which is the green bone here. We disconnect it from down here on the temporal bone. And how that is done is the hands are placed along the sides of it. And there's a, a inward squeeze so that it can open up the space at the uh, temporal bone. So it opens up this space here with an inward kind of a squeeze. Once we feel that there's some mobility in that suture, then there's an upward pull to lift those bones upward. So lifting them up towards the crown of the head. And as that lifts, then it opens up more of the space with the occiput as well as the frontal bone and also the, the temporal bone. So the purple, the blue, and the pink bone are all separating in that space as well as a little bit of the sphenoid bone. The next bone is the most significant bone of this entire work, in my opinion, and that is the sphenoid bone, which is the yellow bone. You can see it from the inside of the skull. The pituitary sits right in the middle there, and underneath is it also extends into the mouth. It's a very significant bone. Here where the purple and the yellow come together is called the sphenobasilar junction. Here's what that looks like with just the two bones. It's the occiput, where we did the occipital release, and the sphenoid bone. And this is if a person were laying on their back with their feet coming out towards the camera. Now the sphenoid bone sits on this. This is a joint. And as the cerebral spinal fluid is flowing through this, this joint moves back and forth. This is a very key indicator as to the alignment of the, of the body. This is the fulcrum. This is the way we hang on the hanger. So if this is off kilter any, we're going to have some, some misalignment of the body at some level. What we do here at the sphenoid bone is we check to see the purity of the flexion and extension. Then we also take the bone and encourage it to go into a little bit of a side bend either way to make sure that that's on alignment and into a little bit of a torque. So we torsion the bone and then we compress it slightly and decompress it. Now with Amy here, there was quite a bit of restriction going on here and it took some time to get it to even get into a flexion extension. As I discovered later, I asked her if she'd had any head trauma She's had some whiplash, which has tightened down the membranes and actually locked this bone into place. So it's taking a little bit of a while to open this up, and I will be going back to checking the flexion extension to make sure that it stays balanced. It's a very significant bone, and this is the bone that we want to have in a nice corrected pattern and, and moving back and forth with the occiput in this type of a rhythm so that the two bones are balanced and the cerebral spinal fluid can flow with ease up into the, around the brain. Okay. And then the last bone is the jaw, where we just pull the jaw slightly upward and then push it downward. Um, and that will just align things. You can feel all the bones fitting back into a new space when the jaw begins to release down. Uh, the person on the table finds it relaxing. Their jaw can be relaxed. It relaxes muscles. And then there's one other little move that we oftentimes will do 
where we're holding into the nasal bones and just lifting up. And that's a good one to open up sinuses and just uh, have, have a little bit more space coming into the front of the face. Because as these other bones are moving, it's nice to open up that space too and those sinuses around the eyes and things like those, those spaces. Cranial sacral therapy is a therapy that I would recommend to everybody who's on a path of healing. It's a good place to start, I, in my opinion, uh, for uh, a lot of work. It's good for almost anything, that it can address almost anything. So you just never know what's going to come out of the work. I've had people come in for a specific reason and they've come out completely different than what they thought they were going to get out of it. So I would say the reason that you may want to pursue cranial sacral therapy is just to see what you get out of it. Uh, you will get some change, the measure of change, nobody knows, but you will get a measure of change out of it. If you're suffering from headaches or vertigo or neck pain, shoulder pain, whiplashing, any kind of spinal column injuries, any kind of chronic pain, anything like that is, this work is excellent for that kind of stuff. Some of the emotional stuff, uh, oftentimes people who are getting away from medications will come in for support with their emotions. Uh, it's a real vast, uh, vast area that it covers a lot in its therapy and in its application. So I would just say explore it and see what you get out of it. I think you'll be quite surprised. Okay, so then tell me. If you would like more information about where to find the work, you can check if you live out of the Austin area, you can check with upledger.com. That's www.upledger.com. And you can look it up, find a therapist and go with the zip code and find somebody in your area. Look for somebody that's taken several classes in, in the cranial sacral work. Uh, if you're in the Austin area and you'd like to try uh, a session from me, you can contact me from, at my website at acranio.com or get a hold of me at White Crane. How I got into cranial sacral therapy was I began my work with massage therapy and the type of clientele that I was getting was I was finding that massage therapy wasn't able to give a lot of real outstanding results. And I got a postcard in the mail about these classes that were going around and I thought I'd check them out. There was something about that first class, the professionalism of it, the type of work, the way I felt when I got out of it, the theory behind it, the practice, it was fantastic. Uh, so I began to practice it and I found that the work brings results that I never thought possible. So for my practice now, I practice very little massage therapy. Sometimes I'll incorporate it if there's a problem into the musculature. But for the most part, I practice cranial sacral therapy as my main modality. If you want more information about this work and you live out of the Austin area, the best place to go is to the Upledger website, which is upledger.com. If you'd like more information from me, you can email me at corehealing at earthlink.net. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos ranging from sexual health to psychology, to mind control. So if you liked it, go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel.